Hi, and welcome back uh, to my channel. So I'm still experimenting with this um, chip amplifier. It is uh, this uh, amplifier I bought from uh, AliExpress for less than $12 uh, with free shipping. And in my, in my previous video, I experimented with it using uh, the AKRF as a signal generator, okay? So this was, of course, uh, useful because the idea is to um, one day when I will have a ham license to use the AKRF to transmit uh, using the, the amplifier. But uh, it's not so ideal because uh, the amplifier, uh, the AKRF itself produces some harmonics, and so these are being uh, uh, amplified uh, by, um, by the amplifier. And the amplifier itself uh, produces some harmonics. So in order to check uh, what, what is uh, really the, 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 co the harmonic component uh, generated just by the amplifier, I need uh, some a better signal generator than the AKRF. And I'm going to use in this video here my signal generator, the Siglent SDG1032X, uh, which can uh, generate signal from 0 uh, to 30 megahertz. So this is going to cover all the HF bands. And then also my spectrum analyzer here. Uh, using the tracking generator, this tracking generator can go up to 1.8 gigahertz. And uh, this amplifier is only rated up to, to 700 megahertz, so that will be uh, sufficient. So uh, let me show you what is the setup I have uh, at the moment. So let me zoom out a little bit. Um, so probably. Yeah, I, was, uh, I want also to include uh, information about uh, the power supply over there. So, well, I will zoom out it uh, there a little bit later. So I have uh, channel one of this uh, signal generator going directly to the amplifier. And uh, the, amplif the signal amplified will then go into this attenuator and then to this attenuator. And then inside uh, the oscilloscope, uh, the spectrum analyzer, where uh, we will be able to see the, um, the result. I already configured the, the, um, the spectrum analyzer to compensate for the 30 plus 30 dB equals 60 dB of attenuation, okay? And from channel 2 of the signal generator, uh, we get an identical signal, coming, the same signal coming out from uh, channel 1, and this is going into this uh, frequency counter. So we will be able to, to follow the frequency of this, uh, of this signal. It is indeed a nice feature of this uh, signal generator that uh, it can uh, clone the signal, okay? So you can have on channel 1 and channel 2 exactly the same signal if you want. Um, so this is configured now in a sweep mode. So we are going, uh, in, um, we are go we are going to start at 2 MHz, uh, th which is the lower limit uh, stated at least in the, in the description of this amplifier. And uh, we are reaching 30 megahertz. It, everything is going to take uh, two minutes, okay? So I'm going uh, quite slow just to take the time uh, to, to see things uh, properly. And, um, and so I want also to check, beside the response on the spectrum analyzer, the response in terms of power consumption. Okay, so I'm going to start the power supply here. So now the amplifier is amplifying. Nothing at the moment, but uh, let's start with the signal and there we go so as you can see the, the frequency is mounting and we are at the moment we are at uh, 3 megahertz and um, so yeah this cable is not really ideal for looking at the frequency okay now you can see the frequency better and uh, so let me uh, display a line here which is going to be useful the line is at the level of uh, let me see it is uh, there at the line of the amplified signal, which at the moment is uh, 33 dBm, which is 2 watts, okay? So I want to monitor basically over this sweep. Uh, now we are already at 10 megahertz, but um, the power consumption and as well as the amplification. So I want to see how the power consumption changing over frequency. And also I want to see if the amplifier keeps the signal constant at uh, 33 uh, dBm. So let me start again now that I explained the setup. So we can uh, uh, indeed uh, start from scratch. Uh, yes, by the way, I'm showing here the response from 1 megahertz to 200 megahertz. And I set here 200 megahertz basically to, to this will contain most of the, the harmonics of our signals. OK, so let's start. OK. So as you can see, uh, the first harmonics are around one division down compared to the main signal. So I would say perhaps even a bit more, 15 uh, dB down. And so let's see if uh, this is kind of constant over the sweep. 
so yeah we are getting our two watts of um, amplification at the moment we are at uh, 383 milliampere at 12 volts and let me also touch the amplifier it's still pretty warm uh, sorry not so warm i can easily touch it at the moment okay we are at 10 megahertz still we are getting our constant uh, 33 uh, dbm signal the harmonics are still about 15 db down so it's a pretty uh, flat response i would say so far okay we are at 15 still there pretty flat yeah i mean there are, there are a lot of harmonics uh, of course i what interests me more perhaps is to see if the response is flat uh, across the spectrum the fact that uh, the harmonics are there is expected and you absolutely need a filter to to clean uh, the signal after the amplification but so far at least this amplifier is very flat uh, we're almost at the end of the sweep uh, 22.5 megahertz also the the, um, the power consumed is more or less constant and uh, yeah 24 megahertz 25 okay so i would say that across the hf band for so from 2 to 30 megahertz the response was uh, pretty flat i would say also in power consumption um okay now i'm going uh, um excellent so let me stop here um now I'm going to modify here the, the voltage. Uh, so this uh, amplifier is rated uh, to work from uh, 10 to 15 uh, volts. But let me try what happens with nine, because that would be uh, like a, uh, just a battery, you know, the nine volts batteries, and would be handy perhaps in a portable situation. Let me see if it is possible to, to reach nine volt and still have a, a, good, a good behavior. So let me see what happens. I'm going to start uh, again here okay so our signal is of course a, a bit weaker we are now at uh, 29 uh, dbm yeah um, so let's just shy of uh, one uh, watt in fact we are just slightly before above 29 so yeah I would say one watt here um, so it's half of the power we had uh, before but we are consuming only 9 volt and uh, uh, less than half uh, no basically half of the power uh, i mean half of the amperage so let's see uh, if uh, the response is also flat at this uh, voltage um i mean it's pretty interesting so let me have a look yeah by i'm thinking about uh, these batteries of course okay so this is what i'm thinking about using as a 9 volt uh, a 200 milliampere source so so far looks pretty good so we are uh, we are still uh, managing to keep our 2930 dbm so one watt the power consumption is also pretty constant and uh, yeah i like uh, this behavior at 9 volts uh, so let's let's wait for the finish we are at 21 megahertz Yeah, it's pretty flat, uh, even at uh, 9 volt. Pretty good. And consider that the signal uh, going out from the signal generator is at uh, minus 7 dBm, so we are getting our basically more than 30 dB of, um, way more, almost 40 dB of amplification. Okay, 28 megahertz, almost, almost finished. okay excellent so as you can see yeah actually at the very very low frequencies it, the, the power of being emitted was uh, slightly lower than one watt but now around five megahertz we are at an hour 30 megahertz uh, 30 db okay excellent so at low frequencies this is the response of uh, uh, this amplifier and uh, now in the second part of this video i'm going to test a little bit uh, the higher end of uh, the spectrum so how it behaves at the higher frequencies 
okay to do that uh, I just uh, took the cable from here so from the from the signal generator and I attach it to the tracking generator of the spectrum analyzer see still this is going to the amplifier which is then going to the attenuator and then to the other attenuator and uh, now I'm going to let uh, I'm going to configure the tracking generator to output of course frequencies from uh, let's say we, we examine frequencies up to 30 megahertz so let's uh, use the tracking generator um, so I'm going to set, uh, set the starting frequency to 30 megahertz and the stop frequency to um, 700 megahertz okay um, and I'm going now to reduce uh, the sweep time uh, at the moment is 20 milliseconds but I want something much uh, slower so we can have a look uh, with some calm and uh, to do that uh, you have to go to sweep and uh, sweep time I'm going to set uh, 30 seconds okay so as you can see now uh, the sweep is taking its time to explore the range from uh, 30 megahertz to 700 megahertz okay so let's go back now to the tracking generator the tracking generator is basically a signal generator that follows uh, this line okay so we expect a signal being outputted that is just where my finger is basically and I can configure its power so I'm going to to output uh, exactly what uh, this signal generator was outputting a second ago and that is uh, minus 7 um, dBm and there we get our signal and as you can see we, we can uh, see its response so it's definitely not flat at higher frequencies let's see how it behaves across uh, this um, this portion of the spectrum so it goes down with uh, um, definitely goes down with um, all right so it starts as you can see it's the the measurement is compatible with what we measure so at around the 30 megahertz the amplification was up there but it goes down quite a lot uh, uh, until we get uh, uh, so here we are uh, I'm following with the marker the tracking generator we are at only 14 dBm uh, and at the very end we get uh, 12 uh, dBm which is very little so it's not uh, working so well I suspect this is uh, due to the low uh, voltage here so let me adjust that and see what happens I'm going back to uh, 12 volts okay we are at 12 volts and uh, of course we have uh, increased the power so let's let's uh, wait until it completes its sweep yeah we're still not getting our full uh, one watt so at low frequencies as you can see with 12 watt uh, we get our uh, yeah 33 dBm uh, as we measured before with the signal generator but then uh, yeah the amplifier stops being very good and uh, it goes down in efficiency so let's see some points of interest uh, here we are at 440 so this, this is a UHF and I'm only getting uh, 25 dBm and at UHF uh, it still behave uh, pretty much as uh, HF with uh, 32 dBm okay so uh, fine this is the response that you have uh, with an input uh, coming from the tracking generator of minus uh, 7 uh, dBm let's see what happens if I increase that for example to to 0 dBm so okay so 0 dBm let's see what happens so at low frequencies nothing changes but as you can see it changes significantly at higher frequencies now we are above the one watt uh, line up until this point okay so it starts to drop but still more or less there okay so i think it's kind of okay it managed to maintain the one watt uh, level up i would say here okay so this is uh, 600 megahertz and then it's uh, actually going down a little bit so yeah I think uh, this is uh, I mean we can 
actually try to extend the range and see what are really the limits. So let me put a 900 megahertz as a stop frequency so we have a look at that part. So it's still managing to, to have a reasonable output level also at 900 megahertz. So in fact, let, let me try with 1.2 gigahertz so we, we can really push it. Okay. So, huh, interesting. There is this little low local low here at around uh, 720. Ah, okay. But then it starts to okay. So basically, it behaves kind of okay and uh, up to one gigahertz, and then it goes down pretty quickly. So I'm not going to investigate uh, even further than this. It's clear that somehow the limits here are this is usable up to uh, one gigahertz. In fact, at one gigahertz, we only get uh, 27 uh, dBm, which means half a watt. Okay. Um, let's see what happens if I try to pump a little bit uh, the power of the tracking generator again. So uh, here, let me put, uh, say, 5 dBm and see what happens. It looks like nothing has changed. So perhaps a little bit just a little bit more yeah now it's increased a little bit yes so yeah we can get uh, one watt of power at one gigahertz now with uh, feeding a five uh, dbm uh, source which is pretty interesting anyway yeah i would say for uh, for 12 dollars uh, uh, shipping included this is a, a good uh, investment yeah now it's pretty warm so yeah uh, let me stop it and uh, yeah hi uh, compared to the original uh, episode 42 i have added here um, this uh, little section it's motivated by your request uh, from bob on the eev blog and bob is asking if i could try to check uh, basically what is the um, distortion effect of this amplifier and the idea is to emit an am signal and see what happens uh, to the sidebands after the amplification I think uh, this is a very interesting thing to do, so I'm doing it. Uh, so the moment I have my signal generator, the, the SDG1032X, uh, emitting uh, an AM modulated signal at uh, 14 megahertz. So let me show you um, the spectrum analyzer. So as you can see, we have the carrier here at uh, 14 megahertz, and then the two sidebands um, uh, here. Uh, at the moment I'm emitting a 5 kHz tone, so the first uh, sideband on the right is exactly 5 kHz uh, away from the carrier, and similarly for the left uh, sideband, okay? Uh, here I have uh, put uh, this line to, to check the level of the sidebands, uh, because if I modify the frequency with the tone being emitted, being modulated with the signal generator, uh, as you can see, uh, we stay on the same line, okay? So changing the frequency does not change the, the amplitude of the sidebands uh, uh, using the signal generator. Okay, so uh, this is uh, what happened without the amplifier. So now let me test what happens with the amplifier in line. So I'm going uh, to connect uh, the amplifier. The, I'm sending the signal from the signal generator to the amplifier. Okay, the amplifier will send uh, the signal to this uh, uh, attenuator and then it goes inside the spectrum analyzer here. Okay, so I'm now going to activate uh, uh, the amplifier from here. Okay, and uh, there we are. Okay, so let me uh, now reactivate uh, um, the spectrum analyzer, analyzer window. And let's see. Um, so again, uh, we have our signal at 14 megahertz. Um, it's now, well, it's amplified. It looks uh, more or less at the same amplitude because I have inserted this attenuator, of course. And here I have my sidebands. So let me put again the sideband at, let's say, 3 kilohertz. And as you can see, uh, the amplifier effect on this AM signal is uh, uh, very significant so it has basically added a lot of harmonics so we don't have just the original harmonics at 3 kilohertz but it added harmonics at uh, of the original signal at 6 9 and 12 kilohertz 
So let me go there with the marker. So this is the original uh, uh, C, uh, I mean, uh, sidebender free killers, but we have also harmonics of it, right? So this basically now looks like a square wave at free killers rather than a sine wave modulated uh, uh, around 14 megahertz. Okay, so I think this is uh, what I wanted uh, to show you and uh, it basically shows that uh, this amplifier is absolutely, uh, I mean, it's very nonlinear in its uh, response. Okay, thank you very much uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.